So, so everyone, welcome back to another episode of Goopy Sims 2, coming at you with another speed build. In this episode, I'm building a house that is very open concept, which isn't usually how I build my houses. I tend to make separate rooms for kitchens, dining rooms, and libraries. Instead, with this house, the kitchen, dining room, and living room all blend together. The second floor is also a continuous stream that opens up to an end cap library with a stellar view overlooking Pleasant View. I call this house the open concept starter mansion. I built it while keeping in mind that the family living there will eventually add on more to the house as they make more money. But for now it's pretty bare on the outside and it has just the basics on the inside. The total cost comes to around 120,000 simoleons, but if I were to fully deck it out, it'd probably be closer to 200,000 simoleons. The family I'm moving into this house is the Newson family. Some of you might know about the Newson family in The Sims 2. They've pretty much exploded in my game in terms of population, so I usually change their last names when I move them into separate families after they get married, but the name has a charming legacy to it, so I kept it with this family. So some of my inspirations for this build came from the mansions in the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills franchise. I've been watching it a lot lately and have been drawn to a couple of the houses on there in terms of architectural inspiration. With Lisa Vanderpump's house, she has an entry path surrounded by water with swans. There's no swans in Sims 2, but I did add a pond. And instead of keeping it flat on the ground, I just created a bridge, which I had to trial and error with the stair tool to make sure that it would all fit. So right now I'm just making the second floor of the build. I 
And if you've seen any of my previous speed builds, you know that I enjoy playing with foundation and making split level rooms. And I thought it was a great way to somewhat break up the giant main room. I made a conversation pit and kept the kitchen and dining room looking from up above. The living room area is inspired by Kyle Richards house in La Quinta. Since The Sims 2 doesn't have the best stairs that have a wraparound effect, I decided to create my own when it comes to the main staircase. So I'm using this interesting decorative stair. And it has that snake effect, kind of wrapping up. For the conversation pit living room area, I am adding sunken staircases, so adding some indents in the foundation for them instead of having them stick out. And just adding a black modern railing to match the staircase. And that room right there is going to be the main bedroom, a bathroom. Another bedroom. The second level actually has three bedrooms in total. The main bedroom, it's pretty big. It of course has its own bathroom and patio access. The other two bedrooms, they're pretty basic with the bathroom in between them. All the bathrooms however do have a tub and walk-in shower. I was able to fit that in the budget. There are actually four bathrooms in total. And if you keep walking down the main hall, you will eventually end up in the library. I'm a sucker for a good stucco, so I just decided to stick with a, an adventurous white stucco for now. Then I stumbled upon this gorgeous stone wall covering for the outside added a matching door, and decided just to go with an auto roof for now. The thing about roofs on a build that's modular is that you're gonna delete them eventually anyway. So I wouldn't worry about making it overly perfect. I went ahead with these windows that I never really used before in builds. I am also using the triangle windows on the corners to create a sort of geometrical effect. Alright, so I pretty much have the windows down at this point. I'm just trying to figure out what a good floor covering would be for the patio and front entrance. Just went ahead with that concrete for now. 
And I've never used this railing either that I'm going with, but I really like it. A lot actually, so I'm using it for the front entrance too. It matches really well with the railing for the staircase too. So up here is where I thought I'd make the dining hall area. Of course, there's no wall or separation, it's just a table and chairs. I like this table a lot. I chose it because of the tapestry that hangs off the edge. And I had to choose a refrigerator that was short enough to not bleed through the ceiling on this raised foundation. So I went with this one and was playing with some countertops to wrap around. And if I have the opportunity and space to create a kitchen island with seating, I will definitely do it. So I added three seats here. Easy access to food right there, or you can take it to go to the dining room or downstairs to the living room. I wanted to be a little unconventional when it came to the living room couches. So I was playing with different shapes. I thought that television fit pretty well in the middle, it's pretty sleek and thin, so it doesn't stand out too much or block the way. It allows free traffic for Sims to walk through, and it won't clog that area. So right there I'm adding the windows to the walk-in showers. Since I have the funds, I decided to play around with color schemes and themes for bathrooms for this house. I really like the claw foot bathtub, so I put that in this bathroom, a couple counters, and a toilet. And we're on to the main bedroom, of course, added a double bed, center on the right side, and onto the bathroom. For this bedroom, I'm imagining it being shared by two siblings. So I have two single beds with just nightstands. Eventually, I'll be adding a desk or a television radio. And then the bathroom in between those two rooms, I'm keeping more neutral colored with wooden tones. And it features the ever so classic bamboo tub.
third bedroom, I'm imagining either for another couple or a teenage sim or an elder sim. It's definitely not big by any means, but it fits a bed, a desk, and probably a television and clothing rack. Over here is the study. Kind of rounds out the second floor. And I have that desk front and center taking advantage of the windows to border it. I decided to go with these booths instead of the couches. It has this shell on the outside and I like that it adds almost a half wall feeling. So I use that throughout the main sunken living room. And for this bathroom, I tried something different. I added the clawed bathtub in the middle of the bathroom, not against any wall, which I've seen in apartments and houses before, and I admire it to some level. So I added that to this build and a second story drop down chandelier. For lighting, I wanted to mix it up. So I added specific lighting for each room that kind of matched its vibe or aesthetic. I didn't use any floor lamps, but I tried to use quite a bit of the rest equally. So ceiling lamps, wall lamps, and desktop lamps. And of course a nice centered chandelier for the dining room. And at this point I meant just painting the textures for the landscape environment. So I'm adding a nice fresh mode grass lawn with some ocean's edge beachy sand around the pond. And on the back I'm just adding a little area for sims to go out. You'll notice I don't have any agriculture. That's because I simply don't have the funds for it yet. But as this family gains funds throughout work, getting promoted, etc etc I will be adding things like trees bushes flowers more water features things like that definitely to take advantage of all that space back there for colors and tones I kept two themes in mind one was porcelain white, sparkling clean silver aesthetic, like in the kitchen and bathrooms. The other is dark, warm, and smoky, as seen in the first floor main room and library.
so we are nearing the end of this build, the open concept starter mansion in Pleasant View. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments, like, subscribe, tell your friends about my channel, and we'll catch you next time. Dag dag.